Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. One of our favorite nonprofits here at the station is the Park City Education Foundation that puts money directly back into our kids' public school education, filling the gaps for some programs that they would know they wouldn't be able to have if it weren't for the foundation. So I am thrilled to be joined by Sarah Hutchinson, the program's Hi. manager of Park City Ed Foundation, and Carrie Strazden, a representative of the Board of Directors. Good morning to both of you. Good, Good morning. morning. So this is an exciting time. The last time the Ed Foundation was here, we were talking about teaching grants, which is really the hallmark, the foundation, what it all sort of started with, were the ideas coming directly from the teachers, and now you announced where they're going. It is. It's such an exciting time. We um, had all the teachers apply for our teacher grants in October, the end of October, and so we got together as a committee in November, and then our board just approved the grants last week. So we are now, I'm playing Santa. Oh, <laughs> what a great timing. time of year it's to so do this. Fun. And what's so special with the teacher grants? These are ideas that come directly from the people ground floor, they're dealing with the kids, they know exactly what they need, what they want. I know the biggest problem is that you can't say yes to everybody I know. because there are so many phenomenal ideas, but how much money are you giving away currently with teacher grants? We typically have been able to give away $55,000, but this last year uh, we had an anonymous donor step up and give us $20,000 extra dollars. Oh my goodness. So this year it was so wonderful because the need really presents itself through these grants, and we had I think 65 grants were um, written up for over $200,000 worth of, of ask. And so our committee decided to, you know, on the, on the 38 most special innovative grants, <laughs> and we gave away $75,000. But in addition to that, we work with the um, administration and PTOs and Live PC, Give PC projects. And so we actually are able to fund even more through those avenues too. So probably there's over, you know, 40 grants that are going back into the classrooms. And I'm sure each one is equally as impressive as the next, but if you had to just choose a few highlights that you want to make us aware mm -hmm. of out of the group, what are some favorites? Well, this year we had some themes, and we usually do, and it was really interesting to see kind of what was bubbling up. Um, mental health and mindfulness was something that teachers are really considering, and so we were able to find programs at each level. At a Trailside has a new mindfulness program coming their way. The high school is working with some uh, training for counselors and the nurses and peer-to-peer -peer training for um, support so that was really that felt really important this year Absolutely. and we were able to fund that another one that um, came through we uh, belovedly call fidgety furniture <laughs> and you have little kids and yes, I have little kids yes. you have little kids so we know that they don't like to sit still and putting them in a desk is a little old school these days um, it works for some some students but, but not for all Right, exactly. So we were able my to... My little boy will be in the not for all category. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas my daughter probably would actually just sit right, there. Right, it just depends. <laughs> yeah, So you're, but you're doing something to balance the odds. It really, it, and it's really great because that, those are the extras. That's the discretionary budget that just isn't funded necessarily from the legislation. So it's really fun to see what comes through. I mean, we've funded everything from stand-up desks to um, weighted animals and balls and, you know, all sorts of, we call it fidgety furniture. <laughs> I like that. We could use some of that around here, to be honest with you. Right. And exactly. so, Carrie, you have a multi-titled uh, resume right now. Of course, you're on the board of the Park City Education Foundation. You're also a senior manager at Deer Valley Resort. You're also a mom. How <laughs> yeah. important was it for you to get involved of all the nonprofits here in town to, to choose the Ed Foundation? I am really excited to be part of the foundation. You know, I think um, I, my son is in Parley's. Um, I have a fourth grader at Parley's Park, and I just learning about what three years ago when I joined learning about what Park City Education Foundation does and some of the programs that they seeded and funded that took off and and really um, helped some of the students in the, in the school and the teachers um, it's just something I'm really passionate about and fortunately Deer Valley is very passionate about it as well um, they really support the community they they love Park City Education Foundation um, we we champion, we help with uh, teacher grants, but we also do ex excellent educators program. Um, and Deer Valley supports these programs through, um, you know, financially, but also through resources and in-kind donations, so. 
Well, and I think the, the Ed Foundation really does, everyone's passionate about it because it's the children of the community. Yeah. So mm -hmm. big businesses, resorts, everybody really likes to get behind the foundation and see how they can contribute. And what I found shocking was a lot of the programs that I would just take for granted, and of course that would be part of public school curriculum. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. when, I, when I read some of the, the programs from art uh, classes, right. STEM classes, mm -hmm. and what I think is so special, this is not just affordable preschool, it's to help kids get into college, specifically right. sometimes first generation Absolutely. One of the themes that Sarah didn't mention, but we see a little bit every year, um, there is a STEM focus, and that's really exciting to see, especially with my fourth grader who is very engineering minded yes. and uh, loves that stuff. So there was a STEM Fridays was one of the mm -hmm. programs that we funded this year, and that's to provide um, STEM-like kits to fourth graders to um, work And I with. love that it's for fourth graders. Yes. You know, it just keeps getting younger yeah. and younger, as it should, like yeah. the rest of the world mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Art and technology was another one that mm -hmm. uh, was a theme this year. Uh, there was a really fun one that combined coding with, with music education. So they used... Um, coding and, and computer programming to teach um, to, to teach basic music like theory composition yeah, yeah. it's, well, great it's so amazing how math and music are so mm -hmm. tightly related mm -hmm. yes uh, when you see that with the kids and I know uh, one of the visitors from the Ed Foundation that was on previously said they're introducing a pilot program for coding I believe in kindergarten mm -hmm. it is starting mm -hmm. in kindergarten. exciting <laughs> I know and there was a really it's a, it's it's something neat to watch it's a pilot program that we started last year and we were able to through the generosity of a family find four teachers at the elementary school. So now coding is K through fourth grade. And our children are gonna be so much smarter than us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we laugh because because sometimes at McPolin it might be in Spanish or Trailside it might be yes, in I'm, French. I'm, so I'm we're really in trouble. I know we are all in trouble. <laughs> that is such a good thing. And I will tell you something I'm particularly proud of. We had the Park City Robotics Club on the show oh, a little bit more. Awesome. Eight out of the ten were female. Yes. on the robotics nice. team. Lady yes. bots. Nice. Lady bots with coding. It's just I getting more that. and more popular. And that's actually a great um, example of a teacher grant. That was a grassroots uh, grant that started in the classroom at Jeremy Ranch with some Legos. And then it went to a school grant because that's how our process goes. We like to pilot these teacher grants in the classroom and then if they are successful then the administration from that school can write a grant to fund it for multiple grades. And then if we watch that school and we see it catching on we can fund it at the district mm -hmm. level. So that's the progression of Park City Education Foundation. It's amazing. One little idea and it goes on to what it is now and you are giving back 1.5 million dollars back into our school system this year. I know none of this would be possible without all of the generous donations from the community members. Absolutely and the, and the support of the companies and the support of the city and it's really a, a beautiful collaboration in this community that really differentiates the education for these students graduating from Park City mm -hmm. schools. Yeah. Well, and especially to compete on a national, sometimes even global scale. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think people think I'm in a, a mountain town, a ski town, mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily mm -hmm. think of the education system, but once you get into these schools and you see what is offered, mm -hmm. we really do live in America's favorite I town. Know. It's like, well, Sarah Carey, thank you for all that you do as thank a mom you. and a community thank member. You. And I know while we're all running around crazy trying to be Santa for all the kids <laughs> in the community, you guys get to be Santa to the teachers right now, that. Which, is, which is phenomenal. Thank All you right. for your time. Absolutely. Thanks, Eliza. Thank you for joining us on today's Mountain Morning Show. If you want to get involved with the Park City Education Foundation, be sure to go online to their website. You can always donate and contribute to the future of our children right here in the Park City community. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right here on Park City Television.